One of the most frustrating aspects of modern console gaming is the lack of technical innovation while PC gaming is speeding away on the Batmobile at 200 frames per second. And sure, you can easily make the argument that consoles are meant to be simple, cheap, and cost-effective, so expecting technical innovation from them is a tad unfair, but I would then respond to you that the consoles themselves were the ones telling you to expect technical innovation, and they're also the platform that is charging you more and more money by the year despite not actually delivering on said technical innovation. 30 frames per second was a literal deal breaker for me. I've told this story a million times, but the whole reason I switched to PC was because a couple years into the eighth console generation, I just got fed up with the fact that hardly any of these new games were actually playing smoother than what I was playing on my 360, despite being way bigger in file size and coming with way longer loading screens and install times. And in 2017, I switched to PC and never looked back. I spent like 500 bucks on a pre-built and it gave me 60 FPS basically across the board in 1080p, which was way better than anything the consoles could offer at the time. And that's also what opened my eyes to all the other advantages of playing on the PC, like the open marketplace, the cheaper games, the greatness of being able to upgrade my build piece by piece at my leisure, the greatness of mods, the greatness of indie and AA games, the greatness of emulation. I'm sure you know all these things, especially if, you, if you've been watching this channel for a while. But it seems that as the consoles get themselves deeper and deeper into a hole, the more desperate the corporate friends in the media get to defend them and pull them out of the hole they made for themselves when it comes to actual technical progression. Because Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo and all these giant gaming corporations basically exist off support from their buddies in the media, I firmly believe that if consoles weren't constantly being juiced by companies with giant marketing budgets and the gaming landscape was entirely dependent on consumer feedback, I firmly believe that basically everyone would be on the PC. But that brings us to today's main topic, and that's Tech Radar. Now, I have I think I've made a few videos about Tech Radar in the past. I can't think of them off the top of my head, but I'm almost certain they've shown up on this channel before, probably because they were defending the corporate buddies instead of actually being honest with the average gaming consumer. And what do you know, that's why they're here in this video. So the, the other day, a viewer sent me two articles from Tech Radar, one of which was from May of 2023, and the other was from January of 2024. Now, the 2023 article is called, It's Time to Admit That 30 FPS on PS5 and Series X Isn't Good Enough, and it's actually a very good piece. It goes over how Microsoft and Sony completely backed off their promised technical innovation, and that it's complete bullshit that you're paying $70 for every new game, and yet we're still targeting the same frame rates that you were getting on the fucking PS2, while again, the PC has been speeding ahead of these frame rates for a literal decade now, and it's really not particularly expensive or difficult to do. The abundance of 30 FPS caps on the console nowadays comes from a few things, in my opinion. Those being the lack of proper optimization, an over-reliance on graphical details no one can actually see but also not give you graphical settings, but most importantly, it comes from the knowledge that console gamers are going to buy the game regardless, so they don't really have to try. Certain developers and publishers have proven very effectively that good-looking games can still run extremely well on the consoles. Like, the consoles can absolutely be optimized to run games at a nice frame rate, but that kind of thing takes effort, and it's at the bottom of the priority list when you're a big publisher who knows people will buy the game anyways, and the corporate media buddies are gonna cover for them. But this article from May of 2023 is a very good read. So why am I bringing it up? Well, dear viewer, because just eight months after Tech Radar published this article, they published a different article called You Don't Have to Chase Numbers on Console, Playing at 4K 30 Frames Per Second is a Superb Experience. How the turntables. It's honestly been a while since I saw such a blatantly corporately motivated article like this, and I couldn't help but talk about it because the article is truly only intended to run damage control for consoles for some reason, and it's just extra funny when this is coming from an outlet literally called Tech Radar, which would imply that you know things about technology. I mean, the headline alone is worth mocking. 4K 30fps has been available on the consoles since the 8th gen refresh. Like, it's been available on the PC for even longer. It simply is not superb in 2024 because it has been long surpassed in 2024. But let's go through this article piece by piece and break down just why it's so stupid and damage controlly. And through all of this, I want you to remember that just eight months prior, the same outlet was demanding better of consoles for the exact same reason that this article is trying to sell you on them. Games journalism in 2024, baby. The article begins. When the PS5 and Xbox series 
Series X arrived over three years ago, there was a lot of chatter about whether we were finally in the generation of playing games at a full, glorious 4K resolution simultaneously with 60 frames per second. This has, of course, not come to fruition. While there is a smattering of 4K60 offerings, the vast majority of games aiming to increase the frame rate have to compromise on image quality to do so, or vice versa, which brings us to 4K gaming at 30 FPS, which I am here to tell you is still a superb experience in many cases and shouldn't be hastily dismissed. That's right, even though we acknowledge that this was a broken promise and an underwhelming aspect of the consoles, like across the board, the thing that even if you don't mind 30 FPS, you probably still feel at least a little bit cheated by the lack of better frame rates from the last console. But actually guys, that's a superb experience. Like we acknowledge this was a disappointment, but also it's superb at the same time. This is a this is a really bad way to start an article. Uh, arguments will go on about whether 4K60 was overpromised or actually what people should expect from the current crop of gaming consoles, but I'm here to bang the drum for a stable 4K30 as it still unfairly gets a bad rap. Plenty of games shine when being played in this mode and the experience on offer is one that's totally valid on console and often underrated. Yeah, it's not just that 4K60 was overpromised on these new consoles, but it's the higher frame rates that were hilariously overpromised. It's not even the exact resolution or the exact frame rates that are the issue with the ninth gen consoles it's the fact that you promised higher numbers than what the last console generation got you and aside from loading times you really haven't gotten any significantly higher numbers yes there are games running at 4k and yes there are games running above 30 frames per second but the issue is how many games are still not running at 4k and not running above 30 frames per second despite these things being rather blatantly promoted as selling points for the consoles we can argue over whether or not 4K30, and often not even true 4K, by the way, but we can argue whether or not 4K30, like we can argue whether or not you're okay with it. We can argue whether or not you actually see this as a problem. But the fact of the matter is true 4K is not nearly as close to being a promised feature as it was made out to be, and high frame rates are also not nearly as close to being a promised feature as they were made out to be. Like opinions on the matter aside, we have to at least agree that that's what happened. So the fact that TechRadar is out here trying to suggest that it's subjective, that there was over-promising on these things, like that's just wild to me. I thought we were all on the same page about that. But as for this last part too, the, the, the certain games shine being played at 4K30, yeah, compared to 1080p30 or 1440p30, I'm sure that's true. But that 30 should be higher than 30. Literally every game benefits from being played above 30 frames per second. That is an objective fact. Higher frame rates are smoother and more responsive and give an objectively better experience in a video game. You don't get to bring up the possibility that overpromising was subjective and then immediately suggest it's a good thing that you're not getting better frame rates than the last console. High fidelity. I will almost always choose a fidelity mode by default. This comes from a desire to see every detail in the game, every leaf vein, hand wrinkle, and glint in the eye, as well as to take the best screenshots. As good as the performance modes are for image quality, nothing beats a true proper 4K resolution complete with all the details, lighting effects, draw distances, at ow. Okay, I understand. I I understand now. Your first console was a PS4. This this makes more sense. <laughs> I mean, dude, you care about every hand wrinkle. Hand wrinkles are important to you in your video game experience. Like, where were the gatekeepers on this one, guys? Like, who dropped the ball here? I do change a bit though from time to time, and often I take a policy of fidelity for screenshots, performance for play, something that I definitely employed in my 200 hours with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, for example. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Um, wait, pause. Wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to pick between those two things? Like, wouldn't it be cool if you didn't have to swap graphical modes for the things that you want? God, you're, you're so close. You're so close. But otherwise, it's quality all the way, especially in an age where we can see more details than ever before in games. I want to appreciate every leaf edge and every raindrop in Seattle in The Last of Us Part II Remastered, every crack in the pavement in Grand Theft Auto V, all the lush trees and shrubs in every distant landscape feature in Red Dead Redemption 2's expansive lands, and every light particle crackling from Cal's lightsabers in Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Well, that is unsurprising unsurprising that you listed every basic white girl lineup of games. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like you care about wrinkle physics over being able to play shooting games and souls likes at 60 frames per second. 
Like, it, jeez, dude. <laughs> like, this is starting to read like a game journalist parody article, but it's real. Uh, even though the witchcraft of upscaling and the current gen console's graphics cards ensure lower resolutions still offer great picture quality, the reduction in details is always noticeable, and the 4K 30 modes are a perfect balance of image quality and pace. It's worth noting that this is something that has been backed up by tech breakdowns, too. Some recommended a fidelity mode as the, quote, best way to play a game from a technical standpoint, with Horizon Forbidden West's Digital Foundry analysis being one that sticks in my memory. <laughs> I love when people bring up Digital Foundry in a completely unhelpful way like this. Because Digital Foundry is a fantastic source for graphics and performance analysis, hard numbers, but I love that you bring them up here as your source for fidelity being the best way to play. Because that's completely subjective. You brought up Digital Foundry as a source of authority on your point, only to use them in a completely subjective way, because best is not actually a definitive word for anything specific. Your definition of best may not be the same as mine. We could all, watching this video, have different definitions of what exactly is the best way to play Horizon Forbidden West. It just makes this entire paragraph sound extra desperate to be taken seriously for literally no factual reason. Embracing 4K 30 also enables you to experience boosts to fidelity that aren't defined by pure quality or detail. Yeah, everything's awesome when you literally erase the definition of words? Question mark? Among other features, fidelity modes often offer great enhancements to light and shadows offered by ray tracing, often the first thing to be shrinked when a game prioritizes frame rates. This adds further refinement and sheen to a game's imagery and ensures you're getting the best picture quality possible. How are any of those things not related to pure quality or detail? Like, genuine question. The first sentence was, Embracing 4K 30 also enables you to experience boosts to fidelity that aren't defined by pure quality or detail. And then you went on to just list a bunch of things directly related to pure quality and detail. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. The next section is called a need for speed. New. I get the desire for smoother action and faster frame rates, of course. The jump between 30 and 60 is noticeable to the human eye in any game, though especially to me, especially in fidelity hyper-realistic games. And that's really what matters, right? Hyper-realistic games. That's, that's ultimately what defines an experience. <laughs> Like, find me a more encapsulating 2024 game journalist sentence anywhere than that one. You will not be able to. Smoother action wins a lot of fans, and that might come with the influence of PC gaming hardware that ensures games aren't limited to caps or bound by console limitations, thus enabling wild frame rates to be achieved, often easily breaking through the three-figure mark and being catered to with specialist monitors that offer refresh rates of 144 hertz and above. Yeah, and we PC gamers have been cranking those kinds of frame rates for a really, really long time, and it's not actually that technically difficult to achieve in terms of like how much money you have to spend in order to get a PC capable of triple digit frame rates. Obviously dependent on resolution and game by game factors like age and optimization. But the point I'm getting at is that there really isn't any good excuse for the consoles not guaranteeing you more than 30 frames per second in the current year. Because if the excuse was that the console would be too hard to manufacture or too expensive if, if they had that kind of tech in there, I'm telling you as a longtime PC gamer that the lineup there doesn't make sense. And I really don't understand why frame rates higher than 30 have been such a slippery achievement over the last 15 years of consoles. Like, blame who you want, you know, blame the hardware makers, blame the developers, blame, like, blame whoever. But the capability has been there for a long time, for better than 30 frames per second consistently, and they just haven't given it to you on consoles. Why would they? You keep buying them. As a result, we live in times where some games will be seen as better when played at higher frame rates. Literally every game will be seen as better played at a higher frame rate. Like all other things being equal, higher frame rates will always be a better experience because these are video games. Especially fast paced shooters or action games, the smoothed down action or animations make combat moves easier to string together or dodge at the right time in games like Elden Ring, enable more fluid and fluent gun fire and shootout encounters in Call of Duty and ensure that movesets are implemented with fluidity in modern fighting games, the latter often being locked to 60 FPS out of necessity and design. God, you don't even know why higher frame rates are smoother. You say here that higher frame rates are smoother because of the smoothed out animations. No, it's the fact that there are literally more refreshes of the image per second, meaning you are literally getting a more responsive experience because every single second you're getting more out of the game's responsiveness, both visually and in terms of like the literal time Time between your input and you seeing your input. But this is the same person who made a point about hand wrinkles. So I, you literally not knowing anything about the benefit of higher frame rates, 
it's just, it's not super surprising. <laughs> uh, the focus on high frame rates over all else is even truer in competitive gaming. This is why almost all esports level competitions are competed on PC, and why games such as Call of Duty will be bumped down to 1440p or 1080p resolutions on console to achieve those higher frame rates. Yes, it's almost like when gameplay is the main factor of a video game, you want the frame rate to be high. Esports events are hosting lower res versions of the game because the frame rate is more important to the actual playing of the game. You're so close to getting it. But despite this preference for prioritizing frame rates prevailing in casual gaming too, no matter how good the image quality is at higher resolution, it doesn't alter the fact that games can be comfortably played at 4K30 and still offer sublime experiences in that setting. So basically you want the graphics and it hurts your feelings that people make fun of you for not actually knowing anything about what gaming was like more than 15 years ago and how little the consoles have actually accomplished in that time. You, me, same page, all right. The eye can keep up perfectly fine with action at that frame rate, the details and movements look more deliberate and realistic, and there's also a cinematic feel to games in 4K30 due to how human actions are presented to and processed by the eye at that speed, and it being close to the traditional film rate of 24 frames per second. Dude, that's crazy. Game journalist wants video games to be more like movies. Who in the entire universe could have ever seen that coming? I too am looking forward to 4K and 60 FPS being the new norm and sweet spot for console gaming. Maybe we'll see that come to fruition if and when the likes of the PS5 Pro release, but until then, 4K30 still does a terrific job of providing awesome gaming experiences and is one I'm sticking with. The detailed environments, exquisite shadow and light rendering, and high quality textures, vegetation, and draw distance to name a few make for immersive experiences on console and 30 frames per second is perfect for enjoying all of that. <sighs> Life must be so fun with standards this low. <laughs> Like, you must not have a care in the world if this is something you're actually this passionate about defending. Yeesh. Like, I truly don't get how you can write an article this out of touch for a website called Tech Radar when someone else in the office wrote this less than a year prior. That's one of the goofier things I've seen recently. And I'm just kind of at a loss as to how I should conclude this video because genuinely what was accomplished here is like, bro got paid either way. Nobody at Tech Radar gives a hoot about accuracy, it seems, which sucks for everyone. Except us, though, actually, because we get to laugh at everything stupid, and ultimately the stupids will ideally get less stupid, and it'll work out in the end. Kumbaya! Okay, toodles.